Have you ever thought about the problem of Noah's Ark from an Australian perspective? Hey, my name is Dave and I'm an Australian. And from my understanding, a lot of these creationist organizations don't actually approach the problem with a lot of vigor. They may mention kangaroos hopping to Australia, or they may mention some of the problems with why we have so many species in Australia, but they don't really look at the big numbers. So today I wanna to look at the big numbers and the big problem. So the story of Noah's Ark, to remind you, is a year long global flood, meaning the entire world was covered with water and every plant and animal died except for those that were on the ark. That is a biblical literalist interpretation. So I'm only addressing those who subscribe to a biblical literalist view. There are many Christians and many believers who do not subscribe to the stories of Noah's Ark as a literal thing. Those people I am not addressing in this conversation, I'm only addressing biblical literalists. So in Australia, as of 2009, we had approximately 21,171 different species of plants that were identified. We have 386 mammals in Australia. We have a total of 917 different species of reptiles and we have a total of 227 amphibia. So from the endemic species, meaning species that are only found in Australia and excluding fish and excluding birds, we have approximately 19,607 species that are only found in Australia. Now the Bible says that Noah's Ark came down after a year in Mount Ararat, which is in modern day Turkey. To reach Australia, as a minimum, two pairs of the 1400 different species of land animals and 18,217 plant species would have to migrate roughly 11,500 kilometers from Mount Ararat through Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia before crossing a land bridge that has since disappeared. The problem is even bigger, however, because there are no plants left on earth for any of the animals to eat. And a lot of Australian animals have a very particular diet. I have two friends who have worked for the Australian Wildlife Hospital and they've shown me how picky koalas can be. I've heard some creationists say that maybe on the flood, they used other leaves and sprayed them with eucalyptus oil that they had made beforehand. The Bible doesn't mention this, this is speculation, and that also can't really work. So you're, you're a vet nurse and you've worked with koalas. Would you say it's possible for them to just live on like eucalyptus spray, sprayed on random other flora to survive? Or if like there's a possibility for them to survive on anything else besides eucalyptus for say like five, six years? No, definitely not. Um, koalas up in Queensland or Southeast Queensland in particular, can't even be moved to parts of New South Wales where they have different eucalyptus species there. The koala would literally choose to die in the tree rather than eat a species of eucalyptus that they're not used to or their, their body isn't used to. So even in southeast Queensland, when you release koalas, um, you have to release them within five kilometres of where they are found. So many different types of species and types of... And there's also different ages of eucalyptus leaves. So in a tree, you've got the older mature leaves that koalas will tend to eat if they're feeling sick or they've got um, certain digestive issues. But then you've got the really fresh young tippy leaves, so the new shoots that are coming through, and some koalas will prefer that. Um, so it's also got to do with their different, where they're up to in their lifespan and if they're feeling sick, what sort of health issues they have, um, and they tend to self-medicate on different types of eucalyptus. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that. That's really helpful to my video, actually. <laughs> to imagine that they survived a year on an ark with no fresh flora and then crawled all the way to Australia and waited for eucalyptus trees to grow is an extreme stretch, especially because eucalyptus trees are trees. They take a long time to grow. Even if eucalyptus trees are fast growers, it would be years without their stable food. Now, the last thing I wanna mention, we know that Australian Aboriginals have existed in Australia for over 50,000 years. The oldest Aboriginal rock painting has been discovered at 17,300 years ago. The Australian Aboriginals are one of the oldest, if not the oldest culture in the entire world. And they've been living in Australia for over 50,000 years and did not notice this global one year long flood that killed every living creature and animal. As far as I know, I don't have any Aboriginal Australian ancestry. However, if I was an Aboriginal 
and there were a group of people telling me that the science was wrong, the archaeology was wrong, the geology was wrong, the, the uh, cultural studies was wrong, the anthropology was wrong, and the radiometric dating and my history were wrong, I'd find that quite hard to believe and a little bit offensive. Of course, none of this is hard to explain if you subscribe to Evolution by Natural Selection as proposed by Charles Darwin. There are no problems with the 19,000 different species, there are no problems with Aboriginal Australians being here for 50,000 years. It seems to be a better explanation for how we see such diversity of flora and fauna in Australia. Now, if you are a Christian and you find these things to be challenging to your faith, I'd like to point you to a few resources in the description that actually try and explain the biblical narrative with the theory of evolution by natural selection. Despite what your pastor or priest may say, most Christians in the world accept the theory of evolution by natural selection. The evidence is quite clear, and if you would like to investigate these things, links are in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe if you like videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.